This is going to be called My Great Escape. And it's going to be about the rapture. And I know I do a lot of studies on this subject, but it's one of my favorite subjects in the Bible. Uh, when the Lord comes back to get me, and then when the Lord comes back with me, those are my favorite subjects in the Bible. That's why I talk about the rapture and the second coming so much. And if you teach or preach on this subject a lot, you're going to keep people from being deceived. You're going to keep them looking forward to something. The Bible says we need to look for that blessed hope. But number one, I want to look at the call of the rapture. When the Lord Jesus Christ comes back to take us home, we're going to hear his voice. He's going to call for us. And I'm going to show you some verses to describe what this call home may sound like. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 through 17 says, For the Lord himself showed us in from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So the Lord is going to shout with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. The Lord's voice is going to sound like a trumpet. In Revelation chapter 4, you read about John, the disciple whom Jesus loved, being caught up to heaven. John is a type of the bride of Christ. And here in Revelation 4, he hears a voice as it were of a trumpet. Revelation 4.1, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet, talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And this is no doubt a picture of the rapture. He heard a trump trumpet talking with him, which said, Come up hither. So most likely at the rapture, you're going to hear the Lord's voice as a trumpet saying, Come up hither. And this reminds me of the story of Lazarus. As you know, Lazarus is one of the men in the Bible who dies and is resurrected by the Lord Jesus Christ. And you can read about this in John 11, 43 through 44, where it says, And when he thus had spoken, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. Jesus saith unto them, Loose him, and let him go. So when the Lord cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Lazarus came up bound and foot with grave clothes, but the Lord said, Loose him, and let him go. And that's what the Lord would do at the rapture. He is going to say something like, Come up hither, or come forth. And you're going to go up. But what will the lost people hear during the call of the rapture? I believe they will hear, hear thunder. Look back in Job chapter 37. I believe the Lord puts little nuggets in the Old Testament for faithful readers. And I believe this could possibly be talking about the rapture. In Job 37, 1 through 4, it says, At this also my heart trembleth and is moved out of his place. Hear attentively the noise of his voice, and the sound that goeth out of his mouth. He directeth it under the whole heaven, and his lightning unto the ends of the earth. After it a voice roareth. He thundereth with the voice of his excellency, and he will not stay them when his voice is heard. Notice it says he will not stay them when his voice is heard. Just like at the rapture, I'm going to hear his voice and I'm not staying down here. I'm going to make my great escape. But also notice the descriptions of his voice. He thundereth with the voice of his excellency. The Lord's voice sounds like thunder. And I believe that is what lost people will hear. In John 12, 28 through 29, it says, Father, glorify thy name. Then there... Then came there a voice from heaven, saying, I have both glorified it, and will glorify it again. Now listen to this. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered. Others said an angel spake to him. So I believe we'll hear the Lord speaking to us 
but the lost men on earth will hear thunder. So that is the call of the rapture. But now let's look at the Christians at the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 17 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself should ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So here you have two types of Christians, the dead ones and live ones. And the verse said, The dead in Christ shall rise first. The bodies of dead Christians are in the ground, but their soul has been with Jesus Christ all this time. In verse 14, he said, Even them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And that is the dead in Christ. So their soul is coming with the Lord, and their bodies will rise from the grave to meet their soul. 1 Thessalonians 4, 17, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. So the dead will rise first. Then we will be caught up together with them in the clouds. And if you're still alive at the rapture, then you'll never have to die physically. You're going up to be with him. But before you go to heaven, you're going to get a new body. 1 Corinthians 15, 51 says, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. And when it says we, sh we shall not all sleep, Paul is saying we're not all going to die. In the Bible, sleep can refer to death. But we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. 1 Corinthians 15, 52 says, In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Notice what takes place in a moment and in the twinkling of an eye. It's that our bodies will be changed. And not the actual rapture. Maybe the rapture itself will happen that quick too. I don't know. Or maybe we'll go up slower. Similar to how the disciples watched Jesus ascend up into heaven. Maybe it'll be like that. I don't know. But the trumpet shall sound. There is the call. And the Christian's body is going to be changed. The dead shall be raised incorruptible. Their bodies that have been corrupted are going to come out of the graves and be made incorruptible. 1 Corinthians 15, 53 says, For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So if you're alive at the rapture, you are going to put on immortality. And all of these people are trying to get immortality now. They're trying to get it without coming to the Lord Jesus Christ to get it. They might as well just get saved and get a new body at the rapture. Instead of worrying about getting in, into all that transhumanism stuff and trying to be a God on earth, an immortal on earth, without coming to the Lord Jesus Christ and getting a glorified body at the rapture. 1 Corinthians 15, 54 says, When this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. So, there's your new body. But we have seen the call of the rapture, the Christians at the rapture, the dead and live ones. And now let's see the Christ rejectors at the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14 says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Notice to leave in the rapture, you have to believe that Jesus Christ died and rose again. You have to put your faith in that to save you if you are going to make your great escape when he comes. The Christ rejectors at the rapture will have missed their opportunity to escape the wrath to come. And they're going to go in a time where the Lord will send a strong delusion. Maybe that's in the middle of the tribulation. 
Maybe that's at the beginning. But there's going to be false Christ, false prophets, deception, evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 2 Thessalonians 2, 11 through 12 says, And for this cause God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned who believe not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. If you want to go at the rapture, you have to believe the truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He died on the cross and shed his blood to pay for your sins. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. If you want to leave out at the rapture and make your great escape, you have to put your trust on the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on the cross when he shed his blood to pay for your sins. But Christ's rejectors will be faced to see a strong delusion from the Lord. But that's the Christ's rejectors at the rapture. But next, next let's look at the chaos at the rapture. The sounds heard when the rapture takes place will be terrifying. As we have talked about, the Lord is going to thunder with His voice. And imagine waking up out of sleep to this thunder. Imagine being close to a highway and hearing the cars crash because the Christian drivers have suddenly vanished from behind the wheel. Imagine hearing the screams of people who have just lost their babies who went up in a rapture. Imagine hearing the screams of people who woke up next to a pile of clothes net laying next to them on the bed because their spouse just left out in the rapture. Imagine hearing the graves bust open. The sounds at the rapture could be terrifying. It will be pure chaos. They will declare a state of emergency. Imagine the amber alerts. All the kids who haven't reached the age of accountability uh, will go up in the rapture. People will be posting their kids' faces on posters all over town and the internet and Facebook. Uh, social media will go crazy. Millions of Facebook posts about missing loved ones, teenagers, taking selfies next to piles of clothes left on the floor at Walmart, uh, where a Christian had just went up in the rapture and left his clothes behind and his glasses and his dentures. YouTube will be chock full of videos showing people vanishing with all the access to cameras on the smartphones and all the vlogs that people do today. You're bound to see the event on camera. There will be tons of footage of the event. Imagine the surveillance videos. And the conspiracy theory websites will go crazy, claiming possibly an alien invasion. It will be complete panic. And with all the Christians gone, it will be worse than ever before. You just won't drive down the road and see a Bible-believing church anymore. Saints will have to hide out to have church. And the only pastors left will be the ones who are lost. The Pope and TV evangelists will get up and say, This can't be the rapture because we're still here. But there's going to be chaos at the rapture. And that's why I'm glad I'm going to make my great escape. But now we have seen the call of the rapture, Christians at the rapture, Christ rejectors at the rapture. We've seen the chaos, and now let's look at the comfort of the rapture. 1 Thessalonians 4.13 says, But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So there is comfort in that where we will get to see our loved ones again. Uh, don't be in too much sorrow over dead loved ones. You're going to get to see them again if they were saved. 1 Thessalonians 4.14 says, For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. And those who are asleep in Jesus, that is those who are saved and have already passed on, will come back with the Lord. 1 Thessalonians 4.15 says, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. There is comfort in the fact that we have a perfect Bible that gives us a promise of the rapture. And Paul said, For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. And we who are alive and remain at the rapture will not prevent them which are asleep. And that prevent is like prevent. Like we're not going to go before up, before them. We're not going to go up first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. 
And 1 Thessalonians 4.16 says, For the Lord himself should ascend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. So there is comfort in that the Lord remembers us and cares enough about us to come back to get us. And then thanks enough of us to let us come back with him when he sets up his kingdom. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 says, Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So take comfort in the fact that one day you are going to meet the Lord, and you will know the Lord, and you're going to be caught up together with them in the clouds, and there you can really get to know him face to face. And notice people said, notice Paul said, And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And from the rapture into eternity, we will never be away from him. 1 Thessalonians 4.18 says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. You can comfort each other with these words because there's comfort in the rapture. There's comfort in knowing you're going to make a great escape. Well, you say you're a chicken because you don't want to go through the tribulation. You are exactly right. Next I want to say there is correction in the rapture. Titus 2.13 says, Looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. If you are looking for Jesus Christ to come back at any moment, then this is going to help you live pure. You don't want Jesus Christ to come back in the rapture in the middle of your sinning. For all you know tonight, you could be caught out in this rapture and be at the judgment seat of Christ. You don't want to go out in sin, doing something sinful. 1 John 3, 2 and 3 says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not appear, not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. And the Bible says, 2 Timothy 3.16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And these verses about the rapture are profitable for correction and instruction in righteousness. The rapture could happen at any moment. What are you going to do for Jesus Christ before it happens? But now for all of the naysayers, Let's look at the case for the rapture. We've seen the call of the rapture, the Christians at the rapture, Christ rejectors at the rapture, the chaos and comfort and correction. And now let's see the case for the rapture. They say we can't make a case for the rapture, but we can. Romans 5, 9 says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be safe from wrath through him. 1 Thessalonians, 4, or 1 Thessalonians 5, 9 says, For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians 1, 10 says, And to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead. Even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Clearly, we have been delivered from wrath. And the entire tribulation is God's wrath. How do you know? Because in Revelation chapter 6, you see the beginning of the tribulation with the opening of the first seal. And it is the Lamb that opens the seals. The Lamb is Jesus Christ, and He is the one opening the seals. And if He is the one opening the seals, it's His wrath. Not only this, but the tribulation is the time of Jacob's trouble. Jacob as in Israel. The church is in Israel. God doesn't deal with the church and Israel at the same time. The church is leaving. The church and Israel aren't the same thing. And if you think they are, look at Romans chapter 11 where it says, And all Israel shall be saved. If we're Israel, then why does it say we shall be saved? I'm already saved. I presently have salvation. I know that I have eternal life. But that's all I'm going to say about the rapture. Do with it what you want to do with it. And if you ask me, I don't really care what somebody believes about when the rapture takes place. 
I don't think it's something to break fellowship over. I don't think it's something to judge somebody's salvation over when they believe the rapture will take place. I'm not one of these people that's going to guess when the rapture is, but I'm not one of these people that's going to jump some down somebody's throat because they want to guess when the rapture is. You just really need to learn to have grace with people and not get so worked up and act like a baby all the time. Just look for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Even if you believe that the Antichrist is going to come first and we're going to go through a bunch of the tribulation, try your hardest to look for the Lord Jesus Christ before you're looking for the Antichrist and all them things that you believe is going to happen first. Just put your mind on Him and live pure because He is a purifying hope. But this has been the great escape and I hope you're going to make your great escape at the rapture. But the only way you're going to do this is if you believed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Paul gives us the gospel in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. He said, Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Christ died. He died by shedding his blood. The Bible says, Much more than being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Christ died for our sins. He died by shedding his blood. He died for you because you're a sinner. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. Our righteousness is filthy rags. Paul said he declared both Jews and Gentiles under, that they're all under sin. So you're a sinner in need of a Savior. Jesus Christ died for your sins. He was buried and rose again. He rose again. This proved he's God. Proved he was God manifested in the flesh. If you want to be saved, come to him as the guilty sinner that you are and believe on him. No matter what you've done, no matter who you are. The Bible says in Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You can't be good enough to get to heaven. Romans 4, 5 says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. In the book of Titus, it says, Not by works of righteousness, which we've done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. So you can't do nothing good enough to get to heaven. But the Lord Jesus Christ was good enough to get to heaven. He did all the works. He lived a righteous life. He fulfilled all righteousness. And if you come to him as the guilty sinner that you are, then God will give you the righteousness of Jesus Christ so that you can go to heaven. But this has been the great escape. And I hope that you're going to escape at the rapture.